in uh, in 2008, when I was uh, 22, I had a massive, inappropriate crush on one of my best guy friends, Adam. I mean, what, what did I name him in the story? <laughs> Alex. <laughs> um, so Alex, uh, I met him because he was uh, my ex's best friend. And he had a, a girlfriend always, who I was also friends with. But um, I was determined to make it happen. Uh, and. And then that year, him and his girlfriend broke up. He was finally single. So I was like, this is my chance. I'm going to tell him how I feel and, you know, forget all the social repercussions of this. And, uh, and I actually told him, and he, and he said he liked me too. And I thought, well, this is going to be great, and we're finally going to make this work. Um, there was one hitch in my plan, besides all the hitches I already mentioned, which is that I was going to crash at his house for a month. This is a plan we had already um, <laughs> way, way before. So, but I was like, how are we gonna be roommates and date? It's gonna be really difficult. But I think because we really care about each other, <laughs> it's really gonna work out. <laughs> so I show up at his house and I unpack all my things on move-in day. I go to his room to say hi and his ex-girlfriend is there. They're back together. Oh. <laughs> And uh, moreover, because him and I are friends, uh, me and her are friends, uh, they just want me to hang out with them all the time. So not only um, was I cruelly rejected by my dream man, I have to be this awkward third wheel to this relationship. And they often, after work, I come, I come home, and uh, they're sitting on the couch watching a movie, and they're like, my, why, oh yeah, my name is pronounced Mai. Um, my, why don't you join us? And I say, no thanks, and I walk two feet over to my tent. Um, I forgot to mention that I uh, live in a tent in a room. Sublet. So I would sit in my tent and just listen to the screams and cry. And I love me. And I'd like, peek out and see them cuddling on the couch. Oh no! Take it away. And uh, it, it gets worse because um, Alex. Um, he uh, realized he kind of led me on when he was single and he felt bad, so he said, My, when you're staying here for the month, you do not have to pay rent. Don't worry about it. So, of course, I said, Oh, awesome. Uh, sweet, my heart already feels better. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that just to be nice. I wasn't supposed to actually say yes to that. So he started really resenting me. We would kind of pass each other in the hall. He would look at me like, Ugh. And I'd look at him and be like, <laughs> and, but, but slowly but surely, I stopped being sad and I got angry. I was like, this guy, he just told me he was into me and then he wasn't. Then he told me I didn't have to pay rent, then he got mad about it. I'm angry. And I go to the most awkward part of this, the most awkward living situation of all time, which was the war that I waged on the house, which I called uh, the Tentifada. Um, you know, I guess, the Intifada is the Palestinian resistance against the Israeli occupation. <laughs> my Intifada was waged from within my tent. <laughs> against, against Alex and his tyranny. The plan was to throw socks at him and fart in his room. <laughs> but I mostly, whenever I saw he was home, I would kind of peek out of the tent and say, the Tentifada's coming! <laughs> make veiled threats at a dinner with our mutual friends and such. So, um, this got very, very heated, you know, we, all, all of our friends were the same. I was angry, he was angry. Was our friendship going to survive? So for, one, for one night at the end of the month, we decided to put all that away. The tent was pushed aside in the room, in the living room, because Alex decided to throw me a big goodbye party. I was leaving, I was living in Austin at the time, but I was leaving the city, that's why I needed a one month uh, sublet in the first place. And um, Alex was a sweetheart, he, um, he bought the keg, he set everything up, a ton of people showed up, and it was a great party. He even set up a, a microphone so people could perform. And naturally, I performed my Shakira impression. <laughs> what is that? You wanted to hear it? <laughs> no, that wasn't the awkward part of the story. That was the part where everyone.
everyone was having a great time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the, it was an awesome party. And uh, the best part of the night was actually before the party. Alex and I just sat around for hours painstakingly making the playlist, filling it with 90s hip hop and reggaeton. And, uh, <laughs> and then I was reminded of why we were such good friends in the first place. We just like being silly and creative together and making up songs about baby animals and such. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, and we're, we're still great friends because during that night I decided um, the Tentifada is disbanded and it's going to have a happy resolution. Thank you.